is what is shared and what we have learned from what is shared. We are on the lockdown. We are home. So now what? I really want to encourage somebody this morning. I want to encourage somebody this morning. I want to encourage somebody this morning. You're home. Remember, I didn't say you're in prison. Mm -hmm. I said, you are at home. Matter of fact, we are all at home. And one of the ironic thing about being at home is we think being at home is a bad thing. Might I share with you, creation began at home. And that home was in Eden, the paradise that God made for Adam and Eve. In that home, everything was done in that home. And uh, there was a time in history, the home was the center of life. Home was the center of worship. Home was the center of employment. Home was where schooling was done. When was that, Brother Vassal? Many of you will think it's long, long time. No, it really wasn't a long time. In the agrarian society, everything <laughs> revolved around home. And that was one of the reasons for which many parents used to have many children. It's not because they were having more sex than you and I are having today. No, I do think it's the opposite. We are having a whole lot more sex than they did. And how do you know that, Brother Vassal? Well, I don't know. I am just reading history in my mind. How do we know that we are having more sex? Well, one quick reason to tell you that we are having more sex is society tells us that because of the inundated information given on sex. Well, how do you know that, Brother Vassal? We are having more sex today. You know why? Because we all have our own bedrooms. Couples in our culture have their own bedroom. In the agrarian society, many times these people never had many homes. They had a one bedroom house. And in that one bedroom house, they live with their children so they've got to wait till their children go to sleep before they can get any whoopee going oh did i say whoopee i mean have any wonderful sexual experiences in those particular times at home they were basically living doing business at home doing worship at home doing everything at home and the more children they have is the better they would be economically because they needed their children for employment to help them on the farm. So again, I just want to encourage you this morning that home is not so much a bad place. Life started in a home. And I'm going to tell you also, life is going to end in a home. When Jesus returns, he is returning to this world to marry the church and to take the church to his home. He told his disciples, don't be worried. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. So we are going to be moving from this home to another home. So we are home now. So what? What has happened because we are home? Home has become the center of life again. Home has become the place where we worship. We are online and we are being ministered to our home. Many of us are working from home. We're doing schooling at home. So home has become the center of life again. The problem is, before this has happened, home was our, what would I call it? Home was our necessary evil for some people, for some couples. They did not want to come home. And when they got home, they came home with intention to eat, shower, go to sleep, and get up to go back to their world. Today, the pandemic has changed that. So we are home now. So what? We are home and some people, because they have not been living the quality life that they were supposed to live, then it becomes stressful. Can I tell you something? 
the biggest reason for which many people suffer in their intimacy is as a result of three things. Could be four, but I'm going to stay with three. Fatigue, anxiety, and stress. And since I said there could be four, there are more, but I didn't want to go off into a whole lot. I want to look more at the the anxiety, the emotional issues, not the medical issue, the emotional issues, the fatigue, the anxiety and the stress. When these three are activated and are in operation in our lives at home, we end up creating a problem in our bodies. And this problem creates what we call a libido distress, a libido feeling going down. So you're home and you should be enjoying intimacy and enjoying all the blessings of home. But you are not because you have allowed the pandemic, allowed the stresses, allowed the anxiety, allow various issues to hinder your growth, hinder your love. So let me share with you this moment, if you can deal with the reality of home and lower your stress, if you can deal with the reality at, at home and lower your anxiety, if you can deal with the reality of, at home and lower the fatigue, then your libido will increase. Now, I know there is a group that want to focus on the libido and there's a group that don't need to focus on the libido. You just need to know you have the libido. You don't just focus on that. I know who you are because you don't need that libido issue. Why? You need someone in your life to have that. But for those who have someone in their lives, you need to accept the reality that you are at home. And because you are at home, recognize that the God that you serve is interested in your life being healthy, victorious, and strong at home. We need to realize one thing at the get-go, and the, the thing I want us to understand is our home was designed by God to be a university of love. Our homes were created by God to become a love lab. Brother Vassal, explain that. Yes, I'm speaking to you, sir. I'm speaking to you, ma'am. Your home was created to be a love lab. God didn't expect us to find love at the church. God, uh, oh yes, that is a place to find love. But I am saying the main place. The main place is not with your girlfriends and your boyfriends, and I'm referring to your friends outside of the home. God didn't expect you to find the love lab with your families outside, your relatives, your parents. God expects the home to be the love lab, the university. Uh, okay, for the scholars and the Bible students who want more clarification and, and more biblical truth to support this, I take you to the original text. I take you back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. God says that he blessed Adam and Eve. And then he says to them, go and be fruitful go and be fruitful what was god telling adam and eve to do he was saying to adam and eve i have blessed you and i have put in you everything that is necessary for you to live the life that I call you to live. What is that? I am calling you to live a life of fruitfulness. Home is the place where the fruit is supposed to grow. Home is where the fruit is supposed to flourish. Home is where the fruit is supposed to find comfort. What? is the fruit. 
that God is saying to you today as a single person? What is God saying to you as a couple person, as a person who are coupled at home? Home now. So what? So what? Home is the place, the university of love. God says, go and be fruitful. What was God saying? God was saying, Adam, I brought Eve to you. Eve, I gave you Adam. You are now brought together to have a relationship that brings forth in this relationship fruit fruit not fruits bring forth fruit and work to produce that fruit that fruit that god was saying to adam and eve was god was saying go and be fruitful in the love that i placed in you demonstrate that love one towards another i have placed it in you but for this love to grow for this love to work he says go and work it you cannot get a beautiful garden because you have planted the seeds. No, that's the first stage of the gardening. You've got to make sure while you plant the seeds, you water the seeds, you fertilize the seeds. It gets proper sunlight and then you are weeding out weeds you're weeding out stuff as you go along and as you do that as you give it the time to grow then the tree will grow then the fruit will come and as you work upon that the fruit will be produced because you are doing the right thing to produce the fruit god calls but it requires a work. So you are home now. Now what? You are at the University of Love. My question is, how is your love life? Think about that. Am I in love as I ought to be? Well, let me talk to a single person first and foremost. Well, I am not married and I don't have a spouse, so he's not speaking to me. Yes, I am speaking to you. Because, you see, you got to understand something. God did not make Adam with Eve at the beginning. He made Adam by himself. Because you have to develop the love that you need to have for yourself before you can share it with any other. Adam had a love relationship with God before Eve came. Adam had a love relationship with himself, appreciating who God has made him, appreciating that he was unique and different, appreciating that he had this communion with God and he was special in the eyes of God. He had an authentic love and appreciation for himself. And thirdly, Adam had a love that he would share with others. It was in love that Adam gave name to everything that existed. It was in love that he cared for the creation that God had given to him. And when he worked and was working so well and God saw what he was doing, God said, uh-uh, it is not good for a man to be alone. Not lonely, be alone. He needs to have someone on his level equally that he can communicate with he can talk with he can share with hence he gave him eve now where did eve learn to love somebody was asking you're asking that i heard you in my spirit uh well i'm not making it spiritual i'm hearing it in my mind where did eve learn to love well, Eve never had to learn to love. Eve was made not from dearth. Eve was made from a product that was experiencing love. And that product was a rib God took from Adam's side. And with that rib that already experienced love, experienced nature, experienced 
self, uh, uh, authentic love, experiencing a love relationship with God, with that kind of DNA in that rib, God made Eve. And God brought the loving Eve to Adam. Adam, it was placed in Adam. Adam had to work it. Adam had to nurture it. Adam had to do all of that. But Eve was made a lover from the beginning. God put them both together and God says, now you have the DNA. Now you have the experience to Adam. Now you have a woman that is a refined lover. Now, 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 go and be. Go and be the lover. Don't yell at each other. Go and be. Don't stonewall. Go and be. Don't go and be a love buster. Go and be. Go and speak each other love language. Go and work because you are gifted with this gift. Does that mean it comes automatically? It is something that you have to go work and, oh, I'm going pre No, shut up, no preaching. But I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. God was simply saying, go and be the lover you're called to be. So you are home now. Now what? You are back in the university of love. You don't have to be running out in the morning and running back in the evening. You are at home, not in prison. You may feel like you're in prison. And one of the reasons you may feel like you're in prison because you have been running away from the reality of the love God has called you to display one towards another. So hear me, my brothers and my sisters. You are home now. Now what? I could spend a lot of time upon that, but I'm not going to spend anything. See, let me take you back to the text. God is more interested in your love life than he is in your children. Because if you go back to the text I read, he said, before you have children, before you multiply, be fruitful. And that takes time. And then when the children come, the children are coming out of the product of a loving relationship so that they grow up in love. And as they grow up in love, keep reading that text and see what happened. God is expecting the university of love that he places in the home to influence life and to influence society. So you are home. Now, what let me then, for the next 13 minutes before I close this particular session and be open to questions and so forth, I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, God cares about you. God cares about your relationship. God wants to have the best for you that you can be. But you have to cooperate with God. You've got to go back to him. And if you are not having the loving experiences that you need to have, then you need to stop and go back to God and say, God, that love that I had for that girl before I marry her, I want that love back. God, that love that I had for that man before I married him, I want that love back. That love that I had through the honeymoon, I want that love back but not do just that i want that romantic love back i want the romantic love the sturgill love the filial love the eros love and the epithemia love i want all of these love back because you know what happened if i have those loves functioning our love life should get better so what do we do now that we are home? What do we do now that we are home? What do we do now that we are home? First thing I recommend, accept being home as a challenge. That's the reason God says, go and be fruitful, go and work 
on the fruit. You know, I am not a farmer, but I think farming is in my DNA. I was born in the city. I grew up in the city. I know nothing about farming. As a boy, I went to the country, as we would say, in the island. And uh, I see those guys are farming, and I said, I can do it. I remember they were planting yam, and I said, I could plant yam. And they said, you go ahead. They gave me the fork, and I tried to plant the yam. They laughed at me. I think I thought I did everything like they did, but they just laughed. And they said, that would never produce anything. See, uh, I never got a chance to practice farming. I don't know what happened to that yam that I planted. I never went back to check it. Uh, but I love farming. At my home, every summer, I do a little vegetable garden. But I accept the fact, one, I'm not a farmer. But I am going to accept the challenge to face with the reality of the farm and learn. And brothers and sisters, I could share a lot with you. If you did check my Facebook page in different times, if you're on my Facebook page, you'll see me posting vegetables because I've accepted the challenge that the tomato is not going to go because I planted. I, uh, uh, the zucchini is not going to go just because I planted. I have to provide all that is needed and work and accept the challenge. I am saying to you that you cannot change the reality that you're home, but you can change one reality, your mentality. I am home. So I'll accept this challenge. Second thing I want you to understand that you are home. Do not create a drama. <laughs> Avoid the drama. Avoid the drama because you know the problem is you're gonna have stress, you're gonna have tension because you're now gonna see this woman that you love. You're only accustomed to see her for X amount of hours. Now you're gonna see her for the whole 24. Adding to it, you're gonna see them kids, your kids that you're calling all kind of names. Can I tell somebody something? Can I tell you a secret? If you call your children pigs, what does that make you? <laughs> yes, you can't call them pigs because it takes a pig to make a pig. So you've got to watch what you call your kids. You don't create drama. Take the emotion out, take the stress out, take the anger out and become objective and realize these are my children they are not pigs they are not dogs they are not this they are my children yes i feel frustrated yes i feel upset that they're not cleaning their rooms and they're not doing these things but no i cannot call them those names because they are mine however not only does it reflect on you when you call them those names, when you call them those names, they are hearing that and they are receiving it and they are processing it and it creates a problem with who they are. Your home now, please avoid the dramas. How do you avoid the dramas? Would you have create a scene at your work when something go bad? No, because you don't want to be seen as a troublemaker. You don't want to lose your job, so you find all the nice ways to fix it. I could give you a whole lot more, but time, I've got eight more minutes. So all I'm trying to say, whatever you would have done at work to fix it, don't tell me that's where you are. You are not that way. You are created a lover. So you have the power to control your feelings. You are home now. Don't make it into a prison. Make it into a love lab where you learn from all your mistakes. You learn from all your success. And, you know, now that you are home, when you're home, please establish a new culture. I wish I had time to unpack this because I'm telling you one thing. One of the biggest problems that our homes have lacked is home as a community. Nowadays, people are eating, but they have their phone going on, they are texting, they are doing all kinds of things. There is no community anymore. You are home. My recommendation is be home and consider home a gift. Take time to be home. Eat together. Eat together. Sit around the table and probably have lunch or 
breakfast or dinner, eat together. I know it's a new culture because we used to eat on our own time, do whatever we want to do, but we are home now. Why is it so important to eat together? Oh, go back when the angels came several times and spoke to Abraham, spoke to Isaac, spoke to uh, Jacob. What did they do? To show that there was favor and grace, they said, won't you eat with us? Because when you eat together, you are showing that there is community. You are showing there is fellowship. When you eat together, you are not just eating, you are fellowshipping, you are talking, you are communing, you are sharing your hearts, you are building what is called sturge love. The more you spend together as a family and talk together, you are building what psychologists call a counsel call a homeostasis, a comfort, comfortable living that creates a community together as a family. Spend time to eat together. I wish I had time to unpack. It's not the time here is a problem. The problem is I want to share so much. But here's the next thing is your home. Take time to have devotions together. Have family devotion. What your children is going to remember when they grow up is not the iPads you give them. It's not the iPhone you give them. It's not the wonderful technological things you give them. It's not all the fancy things you give them. It is the time you spend together in prayer and family discussion. Take time to do that. I know I got to come home. I'm coming home. I see you got five minutes to go. Let me share with you another stuff that I want you to understand. When you are at home, take time my brothers and sisters, to be involved in home life. God did not create home to be a place for genders. I mean, gender, G-E-N-D-E-R. God created home as a place for community. Hence, the community serves based on his or her giftings, not his or her gender. Yes, there are gender roles, and I'm aware of those. Gender roles are things that biologically, by gender, it can be done no other way. Hence, I wanted to have more than two kids, but my wife says, you're gonna be the first miracle. You're going to give birth to the third and the fourth and the fifth. And that was not possible because as a gender that I am, I could not give birth. She was the one. She wasn't rebellious in saying that. She was simply saying, I don't want them other kids you want. But if the Lord blesses, then I'm going to do what God wants me to do from the gender role. Now, I understand their gender roles. But many things that we call gender roles are not biblical gender roles, they are cultural gender roles. I would not want to live in Africa. And the reason I wouldn't want to live in Africa is, and when I speak of Africa, some of the African countries, because Africa is a continent, but some of the African countries, because in those countries, the culture is the man goes to work with his multiple wives and he leads the way. And on the way back home, the women return with their grocery, return with everything, and the man comes back with his machete in his hand. That's the culture. Is it right? Is it wrong? I am not going to answer that. That is a culture. Bring that to the U.S., and see what happened. It's a culture. It doesn't fit in here. It's a culture. What I'm trying to say to you, my brothers and sisters, uh, many things that we call biblical is not necessarily biblical, it's cultural, it's not right, it's not wrong. Hence, what should be happening in your home is not what happened in your parents' home. You are home now, what? So at your home, your mama used to cook and clean the house. Well, your mama never had a job. No, your mama worked just like you. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean your mom. I mean, your wife works just like you and you work just like her. Now you both are at home. Are you expecting her to do all the housework? Can you just, I'm not going to say it. 
You know what I'm saying. My brothers and my sister, now you are home. Work together. If you have never learned to cook, this is a good time to learn to cook. I got one minute to close. Hear me clearly, my brothers and sisters, your home. Your wife is willing to share with you. And I know many husbands are willing to share with their wives. Begin to do the things together. Teach your children by the lifestyle that you live because they are learning it one way or the other. They're learning it by observation that they're learning because you're teaching them. You are home now and my question to you is, now what? Will you make it the love paradise? the love lab that God desire, or will you continue with the struggle? Face the reality. God says to Adam and Eve, go and be fruitful. Go and be the lover you are wired to be. And after you have matured in this, go have children so that they will grow up imitating daddy and mommy because they will grow up loving. I love you all. Wish I could share much more. I'm just so thankful for the Reverend Latoya Grant and her husband accepting this burden to challenge us to be the undiluted Lovers, God calls us to be. From my home in Cleveland to yours, thank you. Thank you. You're home now. I'm home. You would not believe if I had time to tell her them other things that I've done that I've never done in my whole life. But if I had a chance to do it, I'll do it again. I'm home and I'm having fun at home. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Next session, I will be with, I don't know who, but I'll be teaching. God bless you all. Bye-bye.